Speedway. A little bit of a staggered start, but the green flies anyway. Watch for some early movers as Will Power leads the field to green. Ed Sheeran says it's time to go. Let's go. There's a bit of a scramble on that second and third row. And look up on the high side. The red and white machine is Marcus Ericsson. Hello IndyCar fans, welcome to Formula Pun Racer. Today is August 2nd, 2023. When I said in my last video that the next IndyCar race that I'm going to review would be pretty corny, well I was correct about one thing because the latest IndyCar rounds, which is a double header, occurred in corn country. That would be the state of Iowa. And corn is um, grown not just for food out there, but also to develop ethanol, which is the fuel used in Indy cars. So it was a really popular event, especially with Hy-Vee Supermarkets sponsoring both rounds in this Iowa race. Each race was 250 laps. So let's begin with race one. It all started with Team Penske, all three entries, taking the top three spots for the beginning of the race. Will Power was on pole. And of course, when the green flag flew, he took the lead and Scott McLaughlin of New Zealand and Joseph Newgarden of Nashville, Tennessee would be right on his tail. For the most part, it was Penske hogging the race. And even though there were a lot of pit cycles, Penske was still on the top of their game. And the only bit of action other than passing here or there between drivers not in the lead would come at 153 laps when Graham Rahal got a little high and brushed the wall, causing damage to his car for him to spin into the inside of the track. No harm done for Graham, but his car was toast. First car to come by, Kyle <laughs> Yeah, it is unfortunate that for Graham Rahal, his sucky season continues to get worse with this little incident. At least Graham was not hurt. And there wasn't really much in the way of fighting for the lead except between Joseph Newgarden and his teammate Scott McLaughlin. With 42 laps to go, there was a little tangle in the pit lane between Canada's Devlin Francesco of Andretti Autosport and Benjamin Peterson of Denmark driving for AJ Foyt. But not too much harm or foul done for those drivers, they both continued on. When all was said and done, when the checkered flag fell, it was a Penske 1-2. Joseph Newgarden would win the race. Scott McLaughlin second, and Patricio Ward of Arrow McLaren would finish third. Where's Marcus? Marcus Erickson finished fourth in race one. When the second race began, it was Team Penske again dominating the front row. Will Power on pole and Scott McLaughlin second, but Joseph Newgarden had to start a little further back, so it was no Penske 1-2-3 start at least. Nonetheless though, when the green flag flew, Power McLaughlin would duke it out for the lead for the majority of the race. The first incident occurred on lap 193 when Junco's Hollinger racing driver, Augustine Canapino of Argentina, brushed the wall, just like um, Graham Rahal, but at least he was able to get away with it. <laughs> Nothing to cry about there, Argentina, because at least Augustine could continue on. <laughs> the biggest highlight of the race occurred on lap 155 when Dale Coyne driver Stingray Rob was in his pits and having the tires changed. Unfortunately, something went terribly wrong because uh, the tire changer for the left rear wheel didn't put the wheel nut on properly, but another crewman said for Stingray to move, but the, um, the tire changer told him don't go, but he did it anyway. So then on top of that, like the wheel was sort of on but loose, and as he was coming around the track to begin getting back on the track, the left rear wheel came off the car and became a hazard um, between turns three and four. Fortunately, nobody hit that tire, but it was pretty close. At least Stingray was able to limp back to the pits, but unfortunately, because of what happened, Stingray Rob was not only out of the race, but he was disqualified. I'm sorry, Stingray, that this happened to you, being disqualified and all. Ugh, at least it wasn't your fault exactly. He was just someone on the uh, team and miscommunications between all crew members. Still, I hate to see how costly this is for you, man. All the same, kudos to the IndyCar safety crew for making sure that tire would be retrieved before any real damage would occur. It was just good fortune that it didn't hit anybody either. To retrieve a 45-pound tire like that, it tells us one thing. To make sure that the safety is maintained, they are on a roll. <laughs> <laughs> no question about it, with that tire passing by those cars at such tremendous speeds and missing them all, they were definitely wondering where'd that wheel come from. Hey, where'd that wheel come from? 
but they were lucky to avoid it. Lap 168 would be the race's restart, and Joseph Newgarden would retake the lead over from his Penske teammates, and it would be pretty much that way for the rest of the race. With 11 laps to go, the third yellow flag would come out when Ryan Hunter Ray, just like Canapino early in the race, slightly brushed the wall but was able to continue on, putting the race under caution until four laps from the finish when it would be a four lap shootout to the finish. When all was said and done though, it was Joseph Newgarden doing a complete double header Iowa sweep by winning both races. Will Power, his teammate, finished second and Spanish driver Alex Pillow, who leads the IndyCar Championship, finishes third. Oh uh, yes, another Penske 1-2 finish in a row in Iowa. It just goes to show one thing, the Penske is indeed mightier than the sword. Where's Marcus? Marcus Erickson unfortunately finished ninth in this race compared to race one. But once again, with Joseph Newgarden and Team Penske hogging both races in Iowa, <laughs> for us anti-Penske fans, They've creamed us again, times two. <laughs> anyway, I certainly hope you enjoyed watching me put two pies in my face. I know I certainly thought it was fun. <laughs> After all, with Joseph Newgarden dominating in Iowa, he has climbed to second in the IndyCar Championship, just 80 points behind Alex Pillow, so his championship lead has somewhat shrunk. Nonetheless, Alex Pillow is determined to hang on to it as the next IndyCar round is this Sunday in Joseph Newgarden's own backyard, the city of Nashville, the Big Music City Grand Prix, which you can catch this Sunday at high noon on NBC or Peacock. After all, having just won the Indianapolis 500 this year, making him the first native driver from Tennessee to win the greatest spectacle in racing, what kind of fanfare can we expect from Joseph Newgarden coming into the city of Nashville this Sunday? Tune in to find out! In addition, Connor Daly is out at um, Meyer Shank Racing, and he will be replaced by a new Swede. That's right, last year's Indy Lights champion, Linus Lundqvist of Sweden. So, looks like we got some Swedish craze coming our way with Felix and Marcus, and now Linus on the way. Oh, we're bound to see something cook up big time in Nashville. Ye born to her dear, mark, mark, mark. I think I'll take a rain check on whatever Swedish chef is trying to cook for us. But anyway, I say, talk so me can't Swedish chef, I'll stick to Swedish fish for now. But anyway, for all you fans of British cars, such as Aston Martin, Jaguar, and so on and so forth, I'm sorry that once again Aston Martin has still yet to deliver a victory in Formula One, but on another racing front, the latest Formula E round, the season finale, just took place in the streets of London this past weekend, and if you're a fan of Jaguar, you're in luck. Because while Jake Dennis at Andretti Autosport with Porsche Drivetrain won the uh, Drivers' Championship, the two final rounds would be dominated by the almighty Jaguar powertrain with two separate teams running them. The first um, race in London was won by Mitch Evans and the Works t Factory team, the TCS Jaguar Racing team, while Nick Cassidy of Envision Racing, also with Jaguar Power, won the second race. And both drivers are from New Zealand. And on top of that, Envision Racing has won the Constructors' Championship 12 points ahead of TCS Racing. So the Big Cat has won their first Formula E Championship. And it's their first victory on home soil for Jaguar. So congratulations, Envision Racing and TCS, for bringing in home. That's the cat's meow. And let's see what my sister's cat, Meatball, has to say about her British cousin, winning on home soil as well as the championship. Boy, you're not really enthused, are you, Meatball, huh? Well, I know some other cats who are being more psyched about seeing Jaguar win races than you, I guess, and here's some of them. That's right, the cat has won for Mother England. Well, thanks for watching, everyone. If you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe, as well as comment to Formula Pun Racer. I read all your comments. And be sure to click the notification bell below so you get notified every time I post a new video. Congratulations once again to Joseph Newgarden for your dominant performance in Iowa. Congratulations to Jake Dennis for winning the Formula E Championship. And congrats once again 
to Envision Racing and TCS for giving Jaguar a victory in the championship and on home soil in Formula E. See you in the next video, everyone. I'm Aaron Cylinder, firing on all cylinders.